Hi, my name is Robert Schwartzman. I'm the director of Hung Up on a Dream, the new Zombies documentary. I play harmonica in the band. <laughs> Uh, my name is Rod Argent. Um, I was the unfortunate guy that started this band back in, uh, got all the guys together for our first rehearsal when we were 15 years old. Um, and uh, we met outside a pub, which we were too young to go inside, uh, and walked down the road to um, a youth club. And on borrowed gear, we had our very first rehearsal, and that was in 1961. Uh, my name's Colin Blunson, I'm the lead singer in the band, and in 1961 I was actually the rhythm guitarist for one, for one rehearsal. And then I'm not quite sure if I got promoted or demoted, but uh, we all changed around. So I started off as a rhythm guitarist, but I'm now a lead vocalist with the Zombies. Hi, and I'm Chris White. I joined about a year and a bit after the original bass player left, and uh, I'm a um, new bass player. No, the 60s bass player, and uh, yeah, that's uh, and I joined the band then, and then we were professional. Hello, my name is Hugh Grundy, and uh, I'm the drummer with the Zombies. And uh, it's a, I may say, it's a great pleasure to be here and be part of this wonderful documentary called Hung Up on a Dream. I don't know exactly when exactly I first heard my first zombie song, but I grew up with older brothers and and different family members who really showered you know, shared so much great music, just so you know, classic music with me. And it, you know, got me into wanting to start a band and write music as well. But um, I don't know, I just, I really gravitate towards well-crafted songs. And there's just, every song by the Zombies is just so insanely awesome that it's just so, it's so hard not to like fall for every little bit of their music. So it was a great, I mean, I'm answering a lot of questions for you right now in one, but it's just such a crazy thing to be sitting here with everybody right here. It's, it's amazing. These are such amazing musicians and people. And, and uh, I'm just so honored to be able to have you know, been a part of this, to make this film together. So, What for me is the, uh, the greatest pleasure, if I may speak, was, is being part of the documentary and uh, remembering all the stories that, uh, that, that we've all, bo all four of us have been, five, well, five of us have been through and uh, uh, and here we are now, and still doing something along the lines of the zombies. It's absolutely amazing. And we're one of the only few few groups from the sixties who still like each other. Let alone yeah. other groups staying on different hotels, you know. But we like each other. But it, but you're right. It was a crucible um, in the in the in, at that time. Uh, everything was coming out of a post-war gloom, particularly in the UK, and everything felt possible at that time. It was a, a, a time of great energy and, and, and possibility. Um, and it was reflected in the music. And I always remember seeing Elvis on television when I was 11 years old and hearing Hound Dog, and it turned my whole world around. And I saw him on television and I thought, in some way or other, I would absolutely love to be part of this, but it's so far out of my world and out of my universe, really. He was like an alien from another planet. Um, and yet, strangely enough, eight years later, unbelievably, just eight years later, from this American music that we absolutely loved, um, I happened to write a song. Chris wrote a song for the first, for the first record, and, and they, they chose my song, She's Not There. And I later learned that Elvis had it on his jukebox. And, I mean, what a turnaround, you know, for skinny young English guys at, at 18 years old when we first went to the Brooklyn Fox, Murray the in New York, and we had to follow Patti LaBelle. And we thought, oh, my God, she's going to hate us because she's going to think this is watered-down American music. But it wasn't the case at all. She, she introduced us to so many things, the music of Aretha Franklin, the music of Nina Simone, who were brand-new artists at that time. And it was... Um, it was a very magical time for us, actually. Well, it's, it's been an, an amazing journey from when we were, as the guy said, when we were 15, when we very first yeah. had a rehearsal. And I always remember that uh, there was someone there, a very experienced musician there, who later on joined the band. And he saw that first rehearsal <laughs> and he thought, no chance, <laughs> no chance of that. And we were, you know, we were, we were struggling. We were just young guys, really. And to think that we've maintained a career of 60 years in the music business. It's astounding, the thought never crossed my mind that that would happen. And seeing all this in this wonderful 
documentary is exciting and really quite emotional. I've, I felt quite drained oh, when I, <laughs> at the end of the film. I, I acted every part of the film as I watched it. It's, it's, for us, I think it's quite a, an emotional experience. I mean, I, it's hard to say, it's hard to say uh, you know, what, uh, to sort of think of an alternate reality of a different type of zombie's uh, career or past or legacy because everything happens for a reason, and and I think we are where we are, and, and there's a great appreciation for this music, for you know maybe whatever route the band went on, or how these songs were eventually uh, reached different audiences is all really meant to be. I mean, I think it's kind of a fairy tale ending, in a way, for for the band, you know, because it's really you know there is good music over the years that sometimes drifts away, but there's something about music that is timeless that just can that never really goes away and fades away, and I think. So it says something about this band and this music, the fact that even today it's reached audiences and generations that I don't think anyone ever imagined it would reach. I'm a representative of a different generation, and I am filled with such passion for the band and the music. There are people that go to those shows that I saw in the audience that are much younger than I am, and they're just as excited and passionate. So, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say like what if this had happened or that had happened. It kind of doesn't matter because really we are where we are and I think everybody's proud of, of what's been accomplished. I'm just so grateful to be able to be a part of that journey to, tell, to make a movie about, about this band, you know? And I said, I did, Rod sent me a really sweet email about connecting to the film and feeling happy with what we made and I was so nervous that I wanted them to like it, you know? Because it's their journey and it's, there's a lot in it, you know? It's an emotional journey and I do, I, it was important to me, and I told the guys this, that it wasn't just a, mo a movie about a band. It was a music, a, f a film about friendship and about family and connection and finding each other in this magical kind of way that it was all meant to be. So anyway, there's something, there's so many lessons to take away, I think, for new generations. More than just hearing great music, if you watch this film, I think there's so much to learn from it, you know, for bands and, and what it means to stick it out and stay together and, and ride it out. And anyway, so... There's a, I'm just so proud, and, and it's such a dream. The film is called Hung Up on a Dream, but it really is a dream to be here at South by Southwest sitting with you talking about this. This is our first interview for the film together, and it's a real, it's a real treat to, to be doing this. Well